Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, before we go into the broadcast, can we call for our daily bread? Join me right now. Release your faith. Now, you know, someone can be thinking, yeah, based on what you taught yesterday, that the word of God must come to you. Now, realize this. The word of the Lord came to me. And it's relating to this broadcast. And the Lord said to me, every time on this broadcast, lead my children to make the demand for their daily bread. And I said, yes, sir. Now, what is your role as one who's watching? Now, you remember Jehoshaphat when they were going to war. And the war didn't look like something they were going to win. And they, they got... A prophet they decided to pray and so a young prophet began to prophesy and he told them what does thus what the Lord was saying concerning that battle he told them oh put the singers in front and when the prophet was done prophesying Jehoshaphat looked at the prophet looked at the people and then he said hey guys listen up listen up believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe also in his prophets, and you shall prosper. Why did he say that to them? He said that to them because what the prophet just said didn't quite make sense. <laughs> it didn't quite make sense. Now, he's the king, he's the commander of the army, he's the one that will give the direction. So before, he, he believed what the prophet had said. So he had to admonish the people. What does that mean? Now, the prophet had heard from the Lord. They haven't heard from the Lord. See that now? So now, first it says, believe in the Lord your God. We believe in him. He is not going to let us, uh, he is not going to let us be destroyed in this battle. We have a covenant with our God of protection. So he will protect us. But then, how are we going to execute this battle? Aha. Uh -huh. Now, believe in his prophet that he has sent. Now, now, I know people have abused that to say, he said, believe in his prophet. So, someone comes to you and says, I'm a prophet of God. So, the Bible says, believe in his prophet, you shall prosper. If you don't believe in me, you will not prosper. He is talking in relation, in relation to the word of the Lord that the prophet is bringing specifically. Because, you see, God already had a covenant with the children of Israel that they are going out and they are coming in is blessed. So they knew. But then they need direction from the Lord part-time. Now that's why I say now the prophet has given direction. Believe in him and follow the direction he has given. And that's when you will prosper. See that now? So, I pray, I've been praying and asking God. Yeah, and then God sends someone to you. Now, the, the prophet doesn't have to carry a title, prophet. God can send anyone to you. And he's a prophet to you for that moment. Now, it doesn't still mean because he gave you a word yesterday, he has become your prophet. <laughs> no, praise God, no. There's got to be consistency in character before you are able to, before you can say, this person is the prophet that God has sent to me. But God can send anybody to you. Now, when the person gives the word of the Lord, it is your responsibility to believe him. And that's when you will prosper in that thing that you are praying about or God is talking about. See that now? So he wasn't just throwing a blanket, believing in this prophet, and you shall prosper, meaning you will have plenty of money. No, it means prospering in that thing. Uh, you getting this now? So now, in this case, now I've, I've told you God said we should make this demand every day on this broadcast. Now, you believe that God wants to take care of you. See that now? You will be established because that's God, God, God has made a promise to take care of his children. See that now? That's established. So when you believe that, you will be established in your faith. So you are not worried. But then, so what do I do? How do I get money? How do I get? Now, I've come to you to say God is saying every day make this demand. Oh, I believe 
If you say God said that to you, then I believe that. See now, that's believing in his prophets. And what happens next? It says, you will prosper. So you join me as I make this declaration. And let's go now. Join me right now. Say, Father, I demand right now and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now that's it. And you, you said those words with faith in your heart. Because God said, say it. God said, make the demand. And I'm telling you, every angel, that's why you must say it. Every angel around you is responding right now to see to it that every need that will show up today will be met abundantly. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. So, yesterday we're looking at, you know, being productive in the right direction. It's not everything that you do that is being fruitful. It has to be in line with what God has commanded you to do. And that's why it's so important that you wait for God to give you his word. You wait for God to give you his direction. I've often said this. It can take you one week to prepare to pray one prayer that may just last for five minutes. So what are you talking about? Yeah. Now that's why some people don't get result when they pray. Because they just rush to pray. We do not rush to pray. See that now. You want to pray concerning a matter. Now, it doesn't mean it has to stay one week. It doesn't mean, you just get what I'm saying. You want to pray concerning a matter. Maybe someone is sick. And you don't just rush and say, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. You shall lay hands on the sick, the sick shall recover. Now, if you walk into a place where there's a sick person, now, now you know the will of God is for that person to be healed. Oh, sure, that's the will of God. See that now? So you should be ready to lay hands on that person. Now, he said, as a believer in the name of Jesus, you shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. So when you lay hands based on that, now you can do that because you have a working relationship with the Lord. And he said, the word of the Lord that came concerning laying hands on the sick is a general word. He says, anyone who believes in Jesus. And, and funny enough, he wasn't making a promise to the disciples. He was actually giving them an indication of how to know who a believer is. Let's, let's, let's go there. Mark chapter 16. And reading from verse 15. Watch this now. He says, and he said to them, he was with his disciples now, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to who? Every creature. Now, he chooses his words. You may not understand, but he chooses his words. So when he says to every creature, there's a reason he used the word creature. He didn't say every human being. He says every creature. Now, you know, sometimes I, I've, heard, I've heard people say, I, I preach to every creature. I preach to animals. I preach to books. I preach to my room. I preach to everything. Yeah, you know, that's you. Fine and good. But you see, there is specifically a reason why here he used the word preach to every creature. That's another day's talk. But now, let's go on. Now, watch this. He says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Now, he said, go preach to every creature. So you have an assignment to open your mouth and preach to everyone that you meet. But then, he now placed salvation conditional. He didn't say everyone who hears you shall be saved. He said, anyone who hears you and believes shall be saved. Now, guess what he, he, he said? He who believes 
and is baptized shall be saved. Now, he wasn't referring here to water baptism. So people say, have you believed? Now, yes, I believe. Okay, come, let's go to be baptized. And then take you to the river and dip you. That was not what he was referring to. And I'll tell you why. He sent the disciples and said, go preach to every creature. Anyone who believes and is baptized shall be saved. Now you must understand that the work of salvation is not done by us. The work of salvation is a sole responsibility of Jesus. Jesus is in charge of salvation. He is the priest, is the high priest over salvation. Why is he the high priest over salvation? Because he is the captain, he is the author. He is the author. It means he is the only one. There is nobody that can get saved outside of Jesus. It is impossible. Nobody on earth, nobody, and I mean it, nobody can get saved outside of Jesus. He is the door. He is the only door. Yeah. Now, watch this. So he, when he says, he that believes and is baptized, what baptism was he talking about? He wasn't talking about water baptism. He was talking about the Holy Ghost baptism. Say, how do you know? Yes. Now, he said, anyone who believes, and now they say, I have believed. And then he says, two, watch out if they are baptized. Because he is the one that will do the baptism, not you. See that now? He does the baptism. So, how then do I know that he's baptized if I'm not the one doing the baptism? How do I know that he's baptized? Then he goes on to say, now watch this, he says, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Okay. Then he says, and these signs will follow those who believe. Now, I am a Shandy. Lord, may the Lord give you understanding to this thing, but just follow me. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Aha. Uh -huh. So Jesus speaking here and says, go preach to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized no, and I baptize them shall be saved. Then he now told them, hey guys, now this is how you will know those who believe. Now when he says you will know those who believe, he actually meant those who I have baptized. This is how you will know them. He says, you, you find them casting out devils in my name. Oh, oh. So nobody is supposed to teach you how to cast out devils. Now I know you have school of uh, casting out devils you know today you see? but that's not what it's supposed to be it's supposed to be the work of the baptism of the Holy Ghost the moment you're baptized in the Holy Ghost you stop being scared of demons why? because they, they lose their power to do anything to you they lose that power the moment you have been baptized in the holy ghost so jesus said this is how you will know those who have been baptized this is how you will know those who have believed so he wasn't making a promise to the disciples rather he was teaching the disciples how to know that their message is being received it was their own way to know. So I go to a place and I preach and I should look out for these signs. That is what is going to let me know that my job in that place was fruitful and it was productive. It's not by them saying, oh, preach on, preacher. It's not by them saying, oh, wow, hey. No, 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 no. It is by watching out and hearing that someone left the meeting he couldn't sleep before because he couldn't even sleep in his house because demons used to chase him from his house every day. But suddenly he 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 goes home and oh dear Lord Jesus. <laughs> he goes home and then he said, I remember 
many years ago. You know, uh, this dear lady came to me and said, Pastor, I don't know what's happening. Every night when I sleep, they always press me. They always press me. I said, who's pressing me? I said, I don't know, but I never have a, have a good night's sleep. So I began to laugh at her. I said, are you a believer? I said, yes. You believe in Jesus? I said, yes. And they can press you. I said, Pastor, it's a serious matter. It's not a laughing matter. I said, it's what laughing? And I remember I said, you have two hands and you let them press you. I said, what do I do? I said, I'll tell you what to do. Because you believe in Jesus Christ, you are the one that is supposed to be casting out devils. So from tonight, every night before you sleep, speak in tongues, just pray in the spirit for 20 minutes. At least 20 minutes, pray in the spirit. And when you wake up every morning, pray in the spirit again for 20 to 30 minutes. Start from there. And, and she, she, she said, okay. She went, and I saw her a few days later. I said, Pastor, they've stopped pressing me. <laughs> it's good. I said, since I started doing that, no oppression in the night again. I said, good, continue. Now, she was a student living in a student hostel. And then after about a week, she came to me and said, ah, Pastor, I don't understand though that my roommates had a meeting and then they now came and said, I'm disturbing them. And then they were going to report me to the porter of the hostel. I said, what did you do? They said, I don't know. So what did they mean they are disturbing? That she asked them, say, no, that, that you're disturbing us. I, said, I asked her, do you pray in the room? She said, no, I don't. I normally go out to pray. As in, you know, loud prayer. No, no, I don't. So I laughed. I said, continue what you're doing. And she, she continued praying the spirit like that. Continued praying. And then these, these, these ladies, they are of a different religion. They actually went to report to the porter and actually asked that they be removed from that room. Not, not that she be removed, that they be removed from that room. And so they removed the four of them from that room. Praise God. And left her. And then she got other roommates. And now, what happened? In my name, they will cast out devils. I didn't have to lay hands on her and pray for her. That's a go use what is inside you because you believe in Jesus. See that now? You cast out devils. You cast out devils. Praise God. Now, it's an indication Jesus was giving to his disciples that, hey, this is how you will know those who have believed. This is how you will know. So it's not a promise to them. So we preach and we wait, we watch for the signs. And you too who have believed, this is how you will know that. Oh, whoa, I'm no more scared of devils. Wow, praise God. And then he says, if you lay hands, if you lay hands on the sick, the sick shall recover. I remember many years ago, we went for uh, you know hospital ministration and so there was this young lady with us and i shared and i just admonished them on what jesus said because we we're in the hospital there were sick people around so there was this particular lady who who literally was dragging her leg we were there while we we're you know preaching and teaching this lady came into the reception area of the hospital dragging her leg you could see that something is really wrong and then she came and sat down there waiting to see get an appointment with the doctor and when i finished sharing i said it's time to pray and i said i'm not going to lay hands on anybody you the people i came with you know you go lay hands on them so i called this little lady i said go lay hands on that I don't know what to do. I said, do you believe in Jesus? She said, yes, go lay hands on her. I said, go. And she, she went and started saying, be healed in Jesus' name. So I, I went behind her and said, place your hand on her and tell her to be healed. Command the sickness to go. And she did that and commanded the sickness to go. And then the next thing she like, she looked at me like, I'm done. I said, then tell her to get up. I said, I said command her to get up. And then she said, stand up. This lady stood up, stamped her feet on the ground, and started walking normally. Before I turned, 
the lady who ministered to her had gone this other way, running away and screaming. I'm like, what's going on? This, this lady who got healed was rejoicing, rejoicing and, and testing her legs and walking this way. The one who prayed for her had gone this other way, praise God. I, I, I caught her later and said, what's the matter that she had never seen this kind of thing before, praise God. Now, because you believe. So, now it's conditional. So, now, I don't have to say, hmm, God must speak to me first before I lay hands on the sick. Because faith cometh by hearing. Now, he has already spoken his word. If you believe, these are the abilities that you have. So, you lay hands on the sick, you expect them to recover. Now, there are situations where you, you're dealing with an issue that seems to be stubborn. See that now? Now, in that case, you know, every sickness is the same under God. Actually, by laying on of hands, people should recover. But then, many things, you know, sometimes, oh, we've been praying for this person. We've been, now, what you should do at that moment, and that's when you begin to ask the mind of God concerning this situation. Lord, I've laid hands I've, I've done everything I know. I need your wisdom. Now, what, what should I do concerning this situation? And now you wait on the Lord where that is concerned. You can wait for one hour. You can wait for several minutes. You can wait for days. You can wait for weeks. Lord, what do I do? Lord, how do we, how do we get this person here? How do we get this person here? And one day, the word of the Lord is going to come to you. Because God loves the person. And you are concerned about the person. And, and, and sometimes, he, you remember the, the fellow that they dropped in, in, when Jesus was preaching. The fellow that they dropped to the roof. When Jesus saw him, Jesus said, your sins have been forgiven. The guy was sick. He had the palsy. But Jesus didn't say you are healed. He said, your sins have been forgiven. And then everybody went, huh? Who gave this guy authority to forgive sins? And Jesus answered them. And when he was done, he told them, now get up and be healed. And the man got up and was healed. Why did he say your sins have been forgiven him? Because that was what was preventing that man from receiving his healing. His mind have accepted that he is sick because of a sickness, that he, a sin that he committed. That was what was locking his mind. And people can be that way. There are people who come to you as a minister and they don't tell you the truth. Yet, their heart is full of condemnation. And they just want you to do a magic over them. And the problem should go away. But they don't confess to you that, look, this is what is troubling my heart. Condemnation can stop healing from taking place. Condemnation can stop any miracle from taking place. Praise God. <laughs> my time is up. Father, I thank you. I pray that everyone watching me indeed be baptized by you. And let them begin to experience all these signs with boldness in their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.